Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to talk a lot more about truth than about data. A uh, university offered raises to its professors, and when the professors asked if they could share it with their underpaid staff, they were denied, saying the raises weren't about them. The raises were just to raise the ranks of the university in U.S. News and World Reports. A number of working mothers were concerned about how little time they were spending with their kids, so they created a uh, caregiver-to-mother ratio, and uh, women who had lower scores admitted to fudging them or adding a quality time modifier to ameliorate their guilt. And lastly, an economist was charged with coming up with a cost analysis for a dam. He spent months and tons of dollars trying to figure out a demand curve for tubing, which would be lost when the dam was built. It was so hard to quantify, it was left out of the analysis altogether. Now, all three of these stories have examples of what's called commensuration, the process of taking all these funky qualities of our world and boiling them down to single numbers. And they come from this fantastic paper. And we as data scientists do this so naturally and all the time that we almost take it for granted. And I work at the, an organization called Datakind, where we combine data scientists with social organizations. And a lot of data scientists in the tech world have very controlled data. They have data about their products. They can run experiments. But when you, mit, mat, uh, excuse me, when you match them up with a nonprofit, they have to answer questions like, how's our healthcare system doing? What's our best school? And answering those questions requires modeling assumptions, uh, quantifying our world. And this is something that we do so commonly as to almost be invisible. So I want to talk about this process of quantifying our world through commensuration, because it's really there that the search for truth begins. Now, commensuration is wildly useful, because it allows us to compare to similar things. For example, if I look at flu trends, uh, flu outbreaks is one number, and I look at Google search terms for things like runny nose and fever, I can now compare those two things, because they're just single numbers. And that's exactly how Google flu trends works, right? You can track these two things over time. And commensuration is very useful for letting us measure these things on the same scale. It's helpful for improving decision making. And it's even what lets us automate our decision making with algorithms. But there are pitfalls, too. Because commensuration puts blinders up. It necessarily renders parts of our world irrelevant or invisible. And I think one of the key culprits of this are dashboards. Anyone, I use dashboards all the time. I love them. You can see a lot of indicators visually. But we so rarely pull back the hood, open the box, and say, where do these indicators even come from? I've seen companies create strategies based on these numbers without ever asking why, what they are. And so I think these dashboards have a tendency to become fetishized, institutionalized. And speaking of institutions, we should always ask, where do our indicators come from? If I'm using open data, did a government collect it, uh, an organization with an agenda, or just a well-intentioned person with bias? There's real social and political implications to what we do. So I want to talk about three examples in the real world of why it's so hard to quantify things. And the first comes from a group that gets community knowledge workers to go out and do mobile searches for technology-poor farmers in Africa. This group wanted to know who their best workers were based on the number of searches they did every day. And the grim story from that indicator was that a few people were rock stars and everybody else sucked. They should all be fired. Now, that's a terrible conclusion, but it's even worse when you realize that those few people who were rock stars are doing an inhuman number of searches every day. So this indicator is either valuing a glitch or people gaming the system. And they didn't realize that until they actually looked into it. Another group was trying to improve the well-being of farmers in fair trade situations, and they created a farmer well-being index. Now, this index went up year after year. They measured it after every crop. Awesome. Their program's working so great. But implicit in this indicator was temporality. And if they had measured it every month instead of every year, that's what they would have seen. That's their change. So it's actually part of a bigger cyclic motion that they're completely missing. So this was an indicator that didn't take into account the time factors as well. It's very difficult in quantifying our world without taking that into account. And lastly, the taxi company Uber wanted to know the best way to position its taxis so they could anticipate demand. They found out that taxi demand correlates very highly with crime in Oakland. And I know, but wait. Looking into that data, they actually found that there is a huge spike in prostitution arrests on Wednesdays. So they jumped to their feet and exclaimed, San Francisco's this den of iniquity, at least more so on Wednesdays. But then an Oakland police officer said, actually, that tends to be the day that we do prostitution arrests because it's a quiet day. So, so this indicator misses the context. So this is tricky. Quantifying the world is hard, so what can we do? Number one, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. The more interesting your work is, the more different stakeholders you should have bringing their perspectives. Number two, always question your indicators. Where did I get this from? Who decided what the breakdowns for race are? Those are very important. And number three, let's be sensitive. Because we're really rapidly turning the world into this. Numbers, rows, tags. And it's easy to forget when we start with the data that all of this actually represents this. Our communities, our world, you, me. Our algorithms are not going to take that into, into account. So if we don't, no one else will. And that's the truth. Thank you.